Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise and to give him all the glory. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve a powerful God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy. Yes, he is. He is so worthy to be praised. And if you have not welcomed the Lord into your home, into your life, or even your prayer closet room, and if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you right now today, please do so. He's waiting on you, and he's available. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Please return back to your first love, my brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me all thanks, give me all praise, give me all glory. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do. We thank you, Father God, how you're moving in our life. We thank you, Father God, how you're ordering our steps. We thank you, Father God, how you're guiding us and directing us. We thank you, Father God, because you're always here for us, Father God, that you always have time for us, Father God. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Father God, how you speak to us, Father God. We thank you, Father God, how you comfort us right now today, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that your presence is always near, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, we thank you for the blessing that we're going to receive this season, the breakthrough that we're going to receive this season, the miracle that's going to happen this year, this season. Father God, we thank you for the rain that's going to rain down on us harvest this year, this season. We thank you, Father God, for the more than enough, Father God, that's going to happen this year, this season. We thank you, Father God, for the connection, for the resources, Father God, that you're going to put us at the right place at the right time. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for your love and your patience. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we better receive this powerful message right now today, Father God. This is going to keep us full today, keep us satisfied today. And there's no other place, Heavenly Father God, that we would rather be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, give me all thanks, give me all praise, give me all glory. We magnify your name right now today, Jesus. We glorify your name right now today, Jesus. We worship your name right now today, Jesus. Oh, Father God, we magnify who you are right now today, Father God, because you always come first place in our life right now today, Father God. Allow your love to move to this place. Allow your presence to move to this place. Allow your angels angels to join us in praise and worship, Father God, in this place right now today. Father God, let your will be done today. Father God, let your words go out and it should not return by board today. Father God, allow your, this allow your, your angels just to join with us right now today, Father God, as we worship your name, as we magnify your name right now today, Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father God, it's not too hard for you. It's not too difficult for you, Father God. Father God, I believe and I declare right now today, Father God, that you about to show up, that I know for a fact that you about to show out. I believe and I declare and I decree right now today, Father God, that someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone is ready to give their life over to you right now today, Jesus, and the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now today, Father God, and you will and you shall get all the thanks, all the praise and all the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Heavenly Father, Abba Father, you are welcome right now. You are invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord right now. Right here in your sanctuary right now. Right here on your YouTube channel. Right here on your platform. Right here in my brother's home. Right here in my brother's life. Right here in my sister's home. Right here in my sister's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, for you to do a new thing in my brother's and my sister's life, Father God. I'm praying, I'm believing, Father God, for you to open up a door for my brother and sisters right now. I'm praying, I'm believing, Father God, that you're about to do something amazing in my brother and sister's life right now today. That you're about to turn things around for my brother and sisters right now today. I'm praying, Father God, for victory for my brother and sisters right now. I'm praying, and believing, standing on faith, Father God, for healing and restoration right now today, Father God, for my brother and sisters right now. I'm praying, I'm believing standing on faith, Father God, that you're going to put my brothers and my sisters at the right place at the right time, Father God, that you got the right people, Father God, that's already on standby. They already know who they are, Father God. I'm praying, I'm believing, Father God, for a miracle right now today for my brothers and sisters. I'm praying, I'm believing right now today, Father God, that you talk to my brothers and sisters right now. You open their eyes so they can see 
whatever it is they need to see for you right now. Open their ears so they can hear whatever it is they need to hear for you right now today, Father God. Allow your love to move them. Allow your presence to move them right now today, Father God. Oh, Father God, you know exactly what they're going through, what they're facing right now today, Father God. And we are casting all our problems, all our troubles on you right now today, Father God. Because it is you, Father God, that care for us, Father God. It is you, Father God, that's not too hard for you. It is you, Father God, that's not out of your reach, not out of your touch, that you can't turn around. And, Father God, we stand on faith, Father God, that you are turning things around in my brother's and my sister's life right now today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord right now, right here in your sanctuary, right here on your YouTube channel, right here in my... I'm right here in your platform, right here in my sister's homes, right here in my sister's life, right here in my brother's homes, right here in my brother's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now today because you are confident. I'm asking you right now today to control our thoughts, control our mind right now today. So we hear your soft, still voice right now, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, please forgive us for grieving you right now today. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move to this place like you never moved before so we catch the Holy Ghost fire right now today. As we repent of our sins today, Father God, please forgive us for our sin today. Day. Known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood right now. Clean us as white as snow right now. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. Father God, words can't understand how thankful, how grateful, how honored and blessed I am to always pray. Praise and have fellowship with all my brothers, all my sisters today, Father God. Heavenly Father God, I'm here today to let you know that I'm available for service. I'm available for the kingdom, but most of all, Jesus, that I'm available for you. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and shout out your holy name the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out to you every day, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I cry at your name the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I have a hunger. That's why I have a thirst for you, Jesus, because I want more and I want more and I want more of you, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. Glory be to God. Some of y'all has been warned by God. You have been told by God. And what y'all don't realize, you have remade a TV show. A popular TV show that used to come on back in the days. So I'm going to say back in 2003, 2004. And the name of the show was called The Biggest Loser. But on that show, people was can was on that show because they wanted to lose weight. When whoever lost the most weight, they wanted a prize, they wanted money. But you on this show called the biggest loser because why? You mess with God anointing. You bought harm on God's anointing. You bought pain on God's anointing. You bought suffering on God's anointing. You mishandled God's anointing. You mistreated God's anointing. You deceive God anointed. You lie on God anointed. You dictate how you use God anointed in the way that you it benefited you. You was not loyal. You were not faithful to God's anointing. And you don't even realize you're on the biggest show that you are the number one contestant on and it's called the biggest loser. Your days are number my sisters. Your days are number my brothers because I know for a fact that the Lord told you don't you do it. If you're not going to be sincere with my anointed son, if you're not going to be sincere with my anointed daughters, do not lead them astray. Do not pluck their feathers. Do not tell them that you care for them. Don't you dare tell them that you love them. Don't you dare tell them that you want to be their best friend. Don't you dare tell them that you want to be in a relationship with them. Don't you dare do it. Because the moment that you broke their heart, the moment that you did something wrong to them, the moment they sat back and their heart was breaking and their heart was aching and their heart was crying, Jesus' heart was broke. Jesus' heart was aching. Jesus' heart was crying. And what you did to him, what you did to her, you did it to him. And you don't even realize 
you on the number one television show. You don't even realize you ain't got away with it. You in deep doo-doo, my brothers and sisters, because of what you cause. You can sit there and laugh and ha-ha and hee-hee and kiki all day long. All that laughing will come to a stop. It's about to cease, my brothers and sisters. And everybody going to know about it because you are to put yourself on the number one show. You're the number one contestant. But you ain't on there to get no prize. You ain't on there to win no money. God, you are on there because God going to show you what you shouldn't have done. God going to show you. Don't you dare mess with his son the way that you did. Don't you dare mess with his daughter the way that you did. And he going to handle you. You're going to get a spanking to let you know that you'll never do it again. Glory be to God. He got to discipline you to let you know you messed with the wrong child. It ain't like you weren't told about that child. It's not like you weren't warned about that child because he gave you a heads up. I right, know you better take care of him. You better take care of her because my son and my daughter hurt in any kind of way. If they hurt in any kind of way, if you break their heart in any kind of way, if you have them on the side of the road crying in any kind of way, you got to deal with me. And right now, you got to deal with the, with the most high, my sisters and brothers. And that's one person you did not want to deal with, but you did it to yourself. You did it. And you thought that you got away with it, not did you? You thought that you was doing something, not did you? But you don't realize you don't even realize you set yourself up for for the for, for the for the okie You set yourself up what God is about to do. You set your own self up for punishment. You did it. Anybody gonna feel sorry for you? But I'm gonna tell you what they're gonna do. Everybody gonna look at your television show and they're gonna laugh at you because they know the same that you did him, the same that you did her, it's gonna come back on you, but it's gonna be twice as worse. And everybody gonna know about your show. But you ain't gonna win no prize for it. You ain't going to win no prize for it. But you will be dealt with on the accountability of what you've done. You know you was dead wrong for what you did to him and her. You led them on thinking that it was something. They poured their heart out to you. They was faithful to you. They was loyal to you. But look how you betrayed him and her. Look how you backstabbed him. Look how you was telling him all these good things. Then when they got close to you, you flipped the strip on you. You did it. And God heard it. And God saw it. You can sit down like, so I didn't say that. Or you can sit down like, so I didn't do that. God heard what you said and he saw what you done. He saw it. You complain, you complain about this person. Not doing this, not doing that. But when a person showed up to show you they, to show you that they really care about you, to show you that they really love you, what you do? The moment they get here, you flipped on them, turned your back, and like you didn't want to be with him or her no more. But the whole time you was complaining. They was okay where they was at. They was peaceful for where they was at. They only came because you was crying. They only came because you was complaining. They only came because you were saying you tired of being alone, but when they get close to you, you turn your back on. You don't think God gonna handle you on that? Oh yes he is, my sister and brothers. Because you could have left them where they was at. You knew exactly what you was doing. The moment they got close to your facility, you flipped. But God knew that you was gonna do it. They didn't know it. They had no idea. But God knew that you was going to turn your back on them. God knew that you were not really sincere about what you were saying. God knew that you were playing both sides of the fence. God knew that you were playing the field. But guess what? God going to handle you. Because why? You mistreated his anointing. You played with their feelings. You played with their emotions. You played with their heart. And when you did that, they felt some type of way. The moment they felt what they felt, God felt the same thing. And he said, don't worry about it, my son. Don't worry about it, my daughter. I'm going to handle them. They don't even realize they're a contestant on the number one show called The Biggest Loser because they think that they won. 
but they better lose. And everybody going to see how they're going to lose. Trust me. I've been on that show before. They ain't a good show to be on, especially when you're the contestant, especially when, you ain't, especially when you're on there and you ain't going to win nothing, but you're going to get handled. I learned my lesson a long time ago, and I told myself I'd never go on that show ever again. I will never put myself on that show again because I know how it felt to be dealt with by God. It ain't cool. It ain't fun whatsoever. But some of y'all got to learn. Oh, yeah, you're going to learn today because you're hard-headed. You think that your stuff don't smell. You think that you can do people any kind of way? And you think that you're going to get weight with it? Oh, no, nah, it don't work like that. It don't work like that. I'm here today to tell somebody right now today, your days are numbered. I'm just going to tell you that right now. So don't be surprised when it start happening to you. Don't be surprised when the walls start collapsing. Don't be surprised when people start looking at you, start laughing and say, what's going on? That's how you're going to know. That's going to be your, that's going to that's gonna be the pride that you're going to win but what you did to that son and that daughter. And yeah, you're on the biggest loser because you better lose. You thought that you won the way how you handled that brother and sister. You thought that you won how you broke their heart. You thought that you won how you played with their feelings and their emotions. You thought that you won. If you know that you was not going to be sincere to him and her, you should have never took, you should never say, okay, we're going to be an idol. If you know that you were not real, you should never sit there and say, I want to be your friend. If you know that you weren't real, you should never take no gifts from him or her at all. If you knew that you weren't real. And a lot of you right now today that's on the biggest loser, you know, good well, you were not real the whole time. But God knew that too. God has had to show his son and his daughter how, how, how undercover fake you were because that's what you was. They would have never did you the way that you did them. They would never did you like that. But you did it to them. And I know somebody in your family or some friends say, why you do that? You know you was dead wrong and you came up with a hundred million excuses. And you didn't you didn't take no initiative on your part what you did. You blamed everything on him and her. But they were not in the cause of it. They did their part. They did what they were supposed to do. But you didn't hold up your part. You didn't hold up your bargain. And you was dead wrong. But God said, don't worry about it. Their days are numbered. Their days are numbered. That's Pharaoh. Pharaoh days are numbered. Now what? You messed with the wrong person. I don't know who I'm talking to today. But you about to see what you did. You messed up. I can just tell you that right now. You messed up bad. And yes, you are the number one contestant on your own show. The biggest loser. But you ain't losing no weight. Yeah, you're going to lose some weight because you're going to be able to eat when God gets through with you. I promise you that. You ain't going to be able to eat when God get done with you. You're going to be eating, but you ain't going to gain no weight. It's not going to stick to your stomach and it's not going to stick to your ribs. And they're going to say, what happened to you? Why you lose so much weight? You can sit there and say, oh, girl, oh, girl, I'm on a diet. Oh, man, you know I'm going to the gym. They're going to say, hmm, yeah, yeah, you losing weight, all right. Yeah, you're going to the gym, all right. I know what's going on with you. You're getting punished. You're getting that beat down for what you did. They're going to know. And they're going to pick it up. They're going to laugh at you. You better believe it. See, now we're going to get ready right now because you're going to get laughed at. You're going to get picked at. And the first thing somebody's going to say, I told you, you should never did him. And she never did her the way that you did. Karma already have your name on it. You reap what you sow. And when God told you do not do his anointing no harm, that means that you don't do no harm to him or her. That means you don't break their heart. You don't crush their feelings. You don't pay with their emotion. You don't do none of that. But you did anyway. Who you thought that you was? God Almighty? You thought that you can't be touched? But you about to see you about to see. Your days are numbered. I'm just going to keep it real with you. Your days are numbered. Amen? Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalms 105. And we're going to read verse 15. Psalms 105. And we're going to read verse 15. And if you have your Bibles open, 
Let the church say amen. Glory be to God. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. Look what he said. He mean what he said. He said, do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophet no harm. Jesus, not a tape recorder. He told you one time. He told you one time, do not touch my anointing. Do not harm them. And he was dead serious about what he said. But you thought Jesus was playing. You thought Jesus was a joke. Now he's about to show you he is no joke. He's about to show you that he's not playing. He's going to show you that he's about to show out and show out. He's going to show you that he mean business when he told you, do not harm them. Do not touch them. Do not hurt them. Do not break their heart or their feelings. Do no such thing, but you did anyway because you thought that you can't be touched. But guess what? You about to be touched. You about to be touching the mighty way. And ain't talking about touch from praying and healing. You about to be touched with that butt whipping. You remember how your mother and father used to touch you with that belt and them switches? You should tear you up and you said, Woo, mama and dad never do it again. Oh, that's what about to happen. And everybody's be outside listening to you when you get your butt whooped. Oh, so and so in the house getting a whooping. Everybody outside laughing. Guess what? They about to laugh at you too. Because you about to get a whooping. They about to laugh at you too. Your days are numbered. I don't know who I'm talking to today. But God said, my child, you ain't got to worry about it no more. I'm here to defend you. I'm going to handle that situation. You just continue to do what you do. Seek me and praise me. You already gave me your hurt. You already gave me your pain. So I know exactly how you felt when that person did you the way they did you. But God said, I'm, go I'm going to defend you. That's what the word of God says. Vengeance is mine. And God said, he's going to do that. He said, he will... He will he'll prepare a table for your enemies. And God is going to do exactly what his word said he's going to do. I don't know who this word is for today, but you know God is talking to you today. Say, thank you, Jesus. I know that you're talking to me. And Father God, I'm going to continue to seek you. I'm going to continue to praise you. I'm going to continue to glorify you. And if you like what you heard, go ahead, Jesus, like button. Go ahead, subscribe button too as well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you, to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, by us praying this, praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.alt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him, always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. I'm serving me in the CLT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' glory and holy mighty name. Amen.